Hey guys, Nick with Northwest Open Season here. If you haven't tried fishing spawn sacks yet, then stick around and I'll show you how. Alright guys, so today I'm going to go over my top five ways of fishing spawn sacks. Um, spawn sacks have been really popular on the East Coast for a long time and they're just now starting to to catch on over here on the west coast um i've been fishing them for probably four or five years now and i really like them i started fishing them when i couldn't get um road to cure for winter steelhead um, so i started making my own and it really gives you an extra option to have in the arsenal when you don't have fresh row you don't have uh fresh bait to uh fish for salmon and steelhead and trout so it's really easy. Anybody can do it. Um, this isn't going to be a video on how to make a spawn sack. I've already done that. And there's a lot of other videos out there that'll show you how. Um, I'll put a link up probably up here. Um, how to make a spawn sack. Uh, so basically, um, I'm going to show you the top five ways that I like to fish them. And I hope you guys get something out of this and you find it helpful. All right, so here's what we're dealing with. Uh, to make spawn sacks, most of the time I just use these Potsky balls of fire or fireballs. Um, there's a lot of different brands. Anything that's got just a single individual A, you can wrap it in spawn sack and make your own. So basically what we're going to be talking about today is ways to fish them with bobbers, drift fishing, jigs, beads, and uh, corkies. So let's get into okay, so it. Here we go. The first way I'm going to show you how to fish these is basically the traditional way. You're just going to take one of your spawn sacks. And you're going to use a small hook. This is a number four black hook. And all you're going to do is you're going to hook this thing right through the sack, just like that. And that's it. All you're gonna do is you're gonna fish that under a bobber and that's basically a low profile presentation that you want to use most of the time in low clear water conditions um, so this is the lowest profile that you're gonna find whether you use a fixed float or a slip float it doesn't really matter um, but that's it that's pretty much the traditional way of using these I have this tied up on a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and that's about it okay guys so here's the second way I like to fish these so I really like to fish beads just like a lot of other people so a lot of times what I'll end up doing is I'll just run a bead like this it's just a little 10 millimeter UV bead I'll run this through a hole quite a few times and after I feel like I've fished it really well under a bobber then I'll just add that spawn sack. So I have the bead above and it's pegged and the spawn sack down below. And then that's it. You're going to fish that the exact same way. Whether a fish comes up and bites that bead or comes down here and bites this spawn sack, either way, um, you'll hook up on that fish. But uh, so that's number two. You're just going to fish it directly under your bead after you've made a few casts through there and run that through the slot. Okay guys, so here's number three. So I'm gonna take this spawn sack just the way I had it, but I'm actually gonna run this up higher. I'm gonna push the egg loop out. I'm actually gonna hook that spawn sack through the egg loop like that. So it sits higher up on the hook shank. And then I'm actually going to drop my bead down like that. There you go. So then I'll run that through some different areas, but then you have a UV bead pegged on top of a spawn sack presentation, just like that. Um, it's almost like a drift fishing presentation, but you're still using this under a bobber, whether it's slipped or fixed it's up to you but there you go that's number three all right guys so now we're going to switch over to a uh, like a drift fishing rig 
So this is a typical drift fishing rig that I might use. Just a uh, kind of a pearlescent corky and a pink yarn. Sometimes I use white yarn, doesn't matter, but that's pretty much your typical drift fishing rig for steelhead. This is a size number two red hook. And now I have, this is a spawn sack, pretty much the same, only I've added these small, I don't know if you can see them right there. Those are, uh, I think they're called fish pills, but they're little foam balls. So it just gives this a little bit more buoyancy when you're fishing these. So I like to add those if I'm gonna be drift fishing these. So how I'm gonna rig this now is I'm pretty much gonna hook this like I would regular row. I'm gonna push that up, but I don't like to use the I don't like to use the egg loop on these because they're a higher profile, so I'm going to use a bait button. So here we go, we got an egg or a bait button on there. And I'm just going to slide that bait button to keep that spawn sack high up on the hook shank. Keep that hook exposed. So there you go. Now you have a way to fish a spawn sack for drift fishing. And uh, yeah, you can add scent to the, to the yarn there. And there you go. You don't need fresh road to drift fish. You can use that spawn sack just like that. Number five. So here we got some steelhead jigs. These are pretty popular colors. Uh, usually a variation of some kind of a purple, a pink, or an orange is what people will use. So uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll run a jig and I'll fish that. And since I really don't have a lot of confidence in jigs playing, I know a lot of guys do and it's not a big deal, but um, I might fish a jig a few times. And uh, if nothing's going on, I will actually take another spawn sack. This is going to be I try to tie these a little bit smaller profile so there's not as many single eggs in there as the other ones. Um, so I want to keep this pretty small. But basically what I'll do, so I'm gonna pull the feathers back on that jig. I'm gonna hook it on there. Again, with the bait button. I'm gonna push that bait button up on that jig and then flop that back around. And there I have a nice presentation with some eggs on a uh, marabou jig. And uh, so I'll run that through a hole a few times. Uh, this is probably my least favorite way of using the Sponsex, but I have done it. Yeah, if everything else fails, then I'll give this a shot. But there you go. There's my top five. This one would be number five. All right, so there you go, guys. Top five ways to fish spawn sacks. Um, pretty easy, pretty basic. Um, like I said, it just opens up opportunities for um, people to fish bait. Um, when they don't have access to fresh row and basically like i said that's why i started fishing them is because i just got to the point where i wasn't catching as many coho and fall chinook in the fall not having uh, access to row to cure up for steelhead season and this just really opens up some opportunities for people um, it's pretty basic it's pretty easy to tie um, check out the video on how i tie them there's a lot of other videos out there um, there's different variations and another nice thing about this is you can tie up spawn sacks in different color um, of the uh, mesh to make different colors for presentations but you can also carry just one container of spawn sacks with you and then if you like to use a lot of different scents that gives you an opportunity to fish them without having to put it in your egg cure so um uh, I my top two are probably garlic and sand shrimp oil, uh, sometimes anise. Uh, so you can carry those bottles with you and you can fish it through a run a few times and then add some scent to it and run it through there again. These things will fish a long time 
and they're really durable. So the only time I really have noticed that um, they'll break down is if you actually run into some rocks or some snags uh, or you get bit. So it takes quite a bit to actually rip them open and ruin them. So you'll definitely get a lot more casts out of these than you will just fishing row. But yeah, this really opens up a lot of opportunities. Uh, I've really found some success over the past four or five years using them. And I hope you guys find this really helpful. And I hope you get out there and you catch some fish this year. Until then, take care.